Hi, I'm Nick, and this is a quick overview on the current state of the low touch economy and how it potentially could impact your business. A lot of content here to explain, so let me just uh, dive in. So these slides and the current deck I have is mainly focuses on the, the winners of the low touch economy. When we talk about winners, we refer to those companies that are, are actually quite successful already today. Um, meaning they um, expect uh, even even to grow in 2020. Uh, most companies today are under pressure due to the uh, yeah, the, the shakeup in, in the overall economy. Uh, but some companies are winning today. They're, um, they have the right products to sell today due to the shift in demand. Um, they have the right assets to do so. They, they just the right channels. So some companies are winning today. So it's worth uh, looking uh, at those companies to see how they work, what type of business model do they use, what type of distribution channels, and maybe you could copy some of the, um, some of those elements to your own organization to recover or to restart as well. The current research on the low touch economy is being driven uh, by Board Innovation, uh, mainly uh, by me and Phil and a couple of people uh, in our team. We're currently collecting uh, all the different aspects of the low touch economy, see what's changing in terms of consumer behavior, what type of shifts that are happening, changes in business models, and so on. If you see specific examples of companies that are doing quite well, or you don't agree with our statements, uh, feel free to connect on LinkedIn or just send us an email and we could potentially use it in the next update that we will share already within a couple of weeks. Uh, all this research has been done uh, by Board of Innovation. Uh, we are a strategy and business design firm. We mainly work for uh, large organizations uh, when they have significant challenges uh, to tackle. So uh, when a big company needs a new business model, they want to explore new uh, offerings or new service models, uh, our people are there to help out and to give, to give structure to that. We have offices in um, New York, Amsterdam, Antwerp, and Singapore. So um, all our work, all our um, research and work is focused on a, on a global scale so we can see what works in one region maybe you can copy some of the elements uh, to your region as well all our research we bundle that in, in different documents so already uh, if you go to lowtoucheconomy.com you can find some of our research uh, some of our uh, recent decks uh, we also give access to a couple of online uh, documents to collaborate on uh, one uh, notable example is the 50 um, is a business model pivot uh, spreadsheet where we keep track of cha changes in, in companies. Some companies are shifting from one market to another market or changing their distribution model or making other significant changes to uh, how they're operating. Uh, together, we, keep, we try to, uh, yeah, together with other people, we try to keep track of what's happening already in this space. And if you also see an example, feel free to add that to this list. In this presentation, I will quickly uh, give a, an, an introduction again on the low touch economy and what it's all about at this moment. Uh, I'll talk about the winners in the low touch economy, show you a couple of examples of companies that are doing quite well already. And then if you want to follow those companies and you also want to venture into uh, new white spaces, uh, I'll give you six concrete uh, examples, uh, how to do that, what are the triggers to jump onto a white space with a couple of techniques to do that with your own team. The low touch the low touch economy itself, it started by a health crisis. So if you look at the different feedback loops uh, and see how it interacts with um, other elements of society, uh, it starts with the health, the introduction by different health measures, uh, social distancing, uh, restriction on, um, on travel, uh, large gatherings. So okay, that was a starting point and that's also uh, refers to the overall name as so a low touch interactions, low touch economy that started there. Um, due to those measures, uh, there are multiple ripple effects. Uh, one of them is in, on the overall economy. Hey, we've all experienced that already to see how uh, industries are being disrupted, how consumers and companies are, need to work together in a different way. And those two changes also influence how people behave in general. They behave, they behave differently due to the, yeah, the concerns about their health, but also they interact differently with companies uh, and some of that behavior uh, will probably stay also in the next uh, year or two. Uh, those three elements are also interlinked. Uh, if people feel not safe, they will probably uh, consume less uh, and so on. So we need to keep track of all these changes and try to understand how one area influences uh, another. 
If you look at all the different companies today, uh, many of them are in distress at the moment. The, many companies feel uh, the pain of all the, all the lockdowns and the changes in, in the, the global markets. Uh, but still, uh, due to uh, uh, if you look at our research, 15% uh, of companies are winning today, meaning they uh, have the right offer. They expect um, uh, even growth, uh, even growth this year. They will grow in revenue. Um, so we hope that uh, by next year, more companies can uh, follow them, can move in that direction. But still, uh, we will not see a full uh, global recovery of the economy. Yes, I think most experts agree on that, following the different scenarios. Uh, even uh, next year or the year after, we expect that many companies uh, will still be negatively uh, affected uh, by the crisis. Uh, so whatever we can do today is, is gather research on what works and what doesn't work so we can help more companies to move in the right direction and to have uh, yeah, potentially even become one of the other winners in this new uh, economy. A recent survey uh, by Fortune targeting uh, CEOs of larger organizations also asked the same question, when you expect a full recovery to pre-pandemic uh, levels. Uh, what you see here already is that 60% already puts that uh, re recovery point at Q1 2022 and even 27% even um, Q1 2023. So this is just another indication that um, many companies today looking at their own operating model, their own business model, many of them are starting to uh, acknowledge that uh, the, yeah, the next year or two will definitely not be normal. Um, things will be different and you need to act in a different way to uh, make your make your business uh, successful again. If you look at the current state of the low touch economy, uh, we see a lot of innovations uh, happening. Um, so it's not just about the health crisis itself, but also new type of innovations that are popping up uh, around that. Uh, but again, let me give you a couple of examples. In the, the lower left corner here, uh, we see a lot of interesting changes happening uh, to, uh, to city design. Uh, Milan is a notable example. Um, they're and like also Berlin and even London now, they're starting, they're creating car-free zones, extra pedestrian lanes, extra cyclist lanes. But at the same time, those changes, uh, those so-called temporary changes, create extra space for uh, small business as well, like bars and, their, and uh, restaurants can use the open space on the street or extra city infra infrastructure to have enough extra space to have um, enough room between uh, the guests they're, they're serving. The example uh, in, in the middle on the left, uh, this is an example by nation, the national broadcaster in uh, in Belgium. Uh, in order to restart the um, yeah, collaborations with artists and and to do uh, new recordings for uh, uh, for soaps in in this case, uh, they introduced a new type of social distancing bracelets. So actors, when they work together, can keep uh, enough distance. And you of course need to introduce new workflows, even new scenarios. How do you record um, yeah, a soap in this case? Um, when your actors can't really, really be really close uh, together. So they need to introduce new workflows. So that's another example. Maybe the last one, the top right here, that's a change uh, done by Honda to a couple of their fans, uh, a news uh, adjustment there. This is focused on um, vehicles that need to drive around with passengers, whether it's an ambulance or a taxi, uh, but you want to keep the driver safe in this case. So what they do, they, they overpressurize the front cabin so there's no airflow coming from the back to the front. So wherever you're driving around, you, you keep the driver uh, safe. So those are multiple changes and there are others here in, in our report, but it shows that uh, companies are adapting to the new, new environment. There are new types of innovations popping up and some of those innovations are also linked with new type of business models and new ways to interact with your clients. It's interesting to see what will stay uh, some of them are purely linked to managing the health crisis today. Those are uh, less interesting to us because may, probably many of the things are just temporary. Uh, but assuming that a significant part of the economy uh, will be uh, will be altered or will be to uh, will will need to adjust in the next year or two, we'll need to look at those changes that are a little bit more permanent and that are not just uh, here for a couple of weeks. You see also these type of examples. Um, of course, we. Um, we like the creativity and, and, and see that many agencies and entrepreneurs are creating new type of concepts or, or a specific type of products. Uh, but OK, this, this, this type of examples, they make great headlines and it's great for uh, newspapers. But we don't expect that these type of things will become um, mainstream at some point. 
Uh, so it's nice. Um, you'll see those examples. Let's, let's focus on maybe something a little bit more uh, boring changes in the back end of supply chain, but those might have a more, uh, more significant impact on society than um, very creative concepts that you now see these days. So let's talk about the, the winners of the low touch economy and what's happening there. Like I said, there's only a small group of winners uh, today. So those are the front runners in this uh, society. And you as a company, you want to uh, follow them. So even if you can't join the, um, the, the group and the green group here already, you definitely want to move in that direction and want to take the right steps uh, to get closer to, the, uh, to that cluster of successful companies. In order to do so, we need to understand uh, what are the different elements that my company needs to change um, in order to, to get closer to that group of winners. So we looked at the different uh, characteristics of organizations and, and uh, looked at which areas are most affected um, uh, due to the different measures or to the different ripple effects uh, in the economy. So of course, employee interactions, client interactions, and in all type of physical uh, interactions. Also, if people need to work together in closed indoor spaces or the same rooms, that of course is relevant all the different ways of uh, gatherings in groups, or if you need to work together with vulnerable groups and like elderly people, you need to take care of that. Uh, there are all sorts of travel restric restrictions in place. Some of them will stay or will hinder the current way of uh, working. And due to the changes in the back end of, of our society, the, the, the supply chains and so on are disrupted or, or are challenged. Uh, companies feel that or realize that many of their supply chains uh, were too vulnerable to yeah, disruptions. So there will be some changes in that area as well. And there are a lot of changes happening in overall demand. So people are re, uh, are re evaluating which products or uh, services they actually need today and are shifting demand to new type of categories. Some of them is just linked to the current health crisis, but some changes will definitely be here to stay. So we need to look at those as well. If you look at some of the winners in this new economy, and a couple of examples here, uh, Peloton is, a, I think, a very good example on, on how it links with those characteristics. Uh, what, did, what they do, they offer um, gym equipment at home. So it's very expensive uh, exercise bike with a, a, a nice touch screen. And in, in the, the, it's, there's a, a monthly payment, a service model that comes with that because you get uh, virtual courses. There's a virtual interaction with gym instructors gym instructors uh, that, but that means of course there, is, there are no uh, close physical contacts between instructors and uh, the people that are using those bikes also interactions between clients is, is not present because you don't need to share equipment like you would normally do in a gym which is uh, high risky high risk at the moment you can just do it at your own place there are more of those characteristics but you see that a company like this is in the perfect position to grow in the current economy um, so peloton definitely a good example to keep an eye on in another part of our society, there's an example by uh, an example, Panera Bread. This is a restaurant chain in the US and partially in Canada. They uh, sell healthy food and pastries uh, in, in restaurants, and they already had uh, a reasonable e-commerce business as well. Of course, they also had to change, so they were very quick to make uh, modifications to their current operating model, introduced uh, multiple health checks for employees, temperature checks, introduced new client interactions. Uh, one notable example here is contactless one hour deliveries uh, together with a couple of partners. Uh, they of course had to redesign part of their restaurants to make them more safe. And uh, what's also interesting here is that they, they are able to tap into uh, a growing need in the market because due to the health crisis, a large part of, of clients and consumers realized they need to take care of their personal health. So eating healthy is part of that they are in the right position because they already offer healthy food and they even expanded their, they ex, yeah, extended their product portfolio, introducing a couple of extra uh, healthy products uh, to their list. So again, another example to keep an eye on. Um, there are other changes happening in society. So if we focus on the, maybe the supply chain uh, disruptions, um, in certain regions, there is currently uh, some pressure on the supply chain of uh, meat production. Uh, for multiple reasons, but that there is there are some concerns if there is enough meat produ production to follow the actual demand in the market. Uh, if you're a company like this, so like this is Beyond Meat, they offer a meat replacement, a plant-based uh, alternative for meat. So this also could be a, a, a company that's in the right position now to um, to grow and to grab this opportunity because if they they already have the right distribution channels, 
Um, they offer an alternative for a product that is under pressure, at least the supply chain is under pressure. Uh, they're, they're quite young, or it's, it's not a company of 50 years old, so it's a relative new organization. But if they, are, uh, if they manage to organize themselves in the next few months, they could actually gain significant market share. So they could become one of those winners uh, as well. So also those type of companies are included in that list. It's not just only digital players. Um, there are definitely a lot of other companies doing great stuff uh, these days. If you want to do this exercise for yourself on our website, there's, uh, we have a, a scorecard where you can look at all the different uh, characteristics, have a discussion with your team, look at the different elements, see which of those elements are influenced and whether or not how, if you're aligned on the severity of that. And depending on the different scenarios that you put forward, you can see okay, what are the, should we even accelerate, make more significant changes um, than we, that you're currently applying. Feel free to use that PDF. You can just download that on our website. It might be a good starting point to have another discussion with your team. So uh, if you look at the companies that are doing uh, worse today, that are uh, more struggling, uh, we need to understand okay, why are they struggling? What are the, the biggest problems to tackle? Uh, here there are two big categories. Uh, the first category uh, focuses on, uh, on the first category of problems uh, focuses on the, the access to clients. There's a, a, a big problem where there's basically a broken relationship between a client and a company. You can't access them, you can't sell to them. It's different. Way. It's very difficult to communicate directly to, to some clients. So there's a disconnect between those two. Another problem, uh, I will come back to that in a moment, but uh, drop in demands. So if people have different priorities, different needs, and they don't need your product at this moment, of course, that's also an issue. Some companies even have th those two things going on at the same time on top of other problems with the health crisis. So depending on where you are, um, you could be uh, in these type of categories. If you look at the, um, how do you manage relationship with your clients, what can you do to improve that? Um, top left here, this is a company uh, Go In Store. They offer an interesting solution where uh, employees uh, in a normal re retail store, they can use uh, video communication, uh, live chats to walk around in a store so they can show clients around, show different products and services, but without the need for physical interaction and without the need to have larger gatherings in a, a small uh, a retail outlet. The other examples on, on the right, they're a little bit more extreme, but they're focusing on a, a technique where you would uh, put your clients in small bubbles to isolate them from other uh, other clients in your in your outlet in your in your in your shop or in your service or whatever. So the top part, more uh, maybe, probably a little bit weird example, but drive through uh, strip clubs where your clients or your visitors stay in their own car. Of course, they're far more protected. But maybe the interesting example at the bottom here, that's a restaurant in the Netherlands, and they they build small greenhouses. So each customer or two or three people max, they can sit in those small uh, greenhouses. Uh, uh, yeah, away from other clients. And then the, the waiters also have special equipment to serve those clients from a distance. Uh, so this basically recreates um, a service model in hospitality. Um, but the main, the core technique of, of putting your clients in smaller, smaller bubbles and serving them, that's probably a technique that uh, other organizations could copy as well. Second uh, cluster of problems, uh, a drop in demand. So short term versus long term, we need to understand okay, how does it affect me? A good starting point or a good technique to reevaluate your options is uh, the job to be done framework. Basically, what you do is you evaluate what is the core problem that I'm actually solving for my client. Uh, most of the time, your, your, your client uses your product for multiple reasons. So if you're, let's take the example here, uh, people go in and People go on an international holiday too. There are different reasons why they go on an international holiday. They can look at the list here, just to name a couple of examples. Uh, they want to reduce stress. They want to have new experiences. They want to disconnect from work. There are always multiple reasons why people use your products or service. So if you're today in a travel business and your current model doesn't work anymore, uh, you could, as a first start, uh, you could start from this list, look at the different reasons why people use your product, and then see if you can actually uh, keep your client base and but solve new problems or, or new needs for them. It's maybe reprioritize uh, what is the main problem that you're solving for them. So you could end up within travel or outside of travel. So there are multiple options here. Then you, you, you pick some of them and then you evaluate, can, I, can you actually, is there a way to create an alternative or a substitute 
um, in terms of product, so I can keep my relationship with my client, but I offer an, an, al an al altered or a modified uh, service uh, for them. So three of those examples here. Um, there was a company on the left here, Project Passport, what normally, what normally they uh, would take their clients to a resort or to uh, 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 maybe to Bali or somewhere, a very relaxing environment to reduce stress. They, there are courses locally, workshops, so people go to get work together with them to feel relaxed and to, to meditate and so on. Uh, that way of working doesn't work anymore. So they switch to a virtual model with online courses and classes um, offering relaxing music. So they basically built a new digital experiences, new digital experience. So they could still connect with their clients and it could still serve them, but then in a different way, still focusing on the core aspect to reduce stress. Uh, and that's uh, yeah, basically an alternative solution that they built in a couple of uh, weeks. The other example here in the middle, um, again, focusing on convenience or wanting to be served. They offer uh, home sweet home. They have offer a hotel experience, but at your home. So they take part of the hotel experience. Like you have a concierge service. There are uh, um, concerts happening, but then virtually uh, in this, this way you get food delivered. So they take some of those aspects uh, that are normally linked to a hotel, but then bring that to your home so you can experience a similar um, entertainment or relaxing experience. So you will, will be served at home. The last example to disconnect from work. That's another reason why people maybe go on a holiday. Uh, here you end up in very different type of categories. There are, of course, there's a whole gaming scene or other type of entertainment products that are uh, substitutes for uh, those type of products. Uh, to disconnect from work, the example here, Animal Crossing, it's one of the big winners currently. There, um, yeah, many people, uh, definitely a lot of adults are also on, on this platform where they just build small uh, islands and visit each other. There's a lot of social interaction, but people use that product, like this, this game, to disconnect from work. That could, that's basically an alternative also for some travel uh, solutions as well. So it's up to you to decide what are my core needs of my clients, how are they shifting, and can you offer some kind of substitute as well. If we if we look at your strategy, we can look at uh, we can put it on a, on a framework uh, like this. So on the bottom uh, left here, you keep your existing my you keep your existing client base and you keep your uh, core product. But maybe you need to tweak just that a little bit. You maybe need to re rethink your distribution channel or maybe your production technique needs to evolve. But you can do a lot of core innovations just in the middle here. So you would innovate in the core of your organization. For many organizations, this is not, not enough today. They need to uh, be a little bit more ambitious or they're forced to jump into other areas as well. So then here are a couple of options. You can keep your offering to so your product and service, but try to find a new market for them. So switching maybe from a B2B model to a B2C model, uh, or you um, you're keep your client base, you keep your relationship you, that you have with your existing clients, but then try to find solutions for other problems uh, they might have. That's another way to approach that. But if you would um, need to, if those adjacent innovations are not enough, you might need to jump to a completely new white space. And that's the area in the top right corner where you end up with a potential new client base and a new type of product you're offering them. Maybe even your business model needs to be uh, fully redesigned. Uh, but okay, where do you start? Where do you find those innovations? What are the, what are the triggers to end up in that corner? So, I'll give you a couple of examples uh, in a moment. We can already learn from other organizations and uh, that's, that's part of that list that I also refer, refer to in uh, my introduction. Um, just take one example here uh, at the top here. There's a company, uh, Emmy Controls. Uh, Emmy Controls, what they normally did, they had a business line focused on snow cannons uh, linked to ski resorts. Uh, if you're in that business, you could assume that in the next year uh, ski resorts will not be as successful as, as normally. So there's less demand. And at the same time, they saw an opportunity to uh, modify their products and to uh, modify their snow cannons to be used as uh, to disinfect large open spaces, uh, indoor or outdoor. But then you can, let's say you have a production facility or an uh, or a, a event ongoing, then you can use their tools now to disinfect those areas. So you may make a switch to a new type of uh, market. There are more of these examples. Feel free to go to that website and, and see more of those cases to get some inspiration. 
The current examples, or many on those lists, as you will see, are will be rather small organizations, so not the Fortune 500 type of companies, not a not the big brands, because typically it takes a little bit longer for those companies to uh, roll out those innovations and those changes. Uh, but we see the first companies popping up now that are actually also following in, in that direction. Uh, one of the latest examples here is uh, PepsiCo. Um, PepsiCo, uh, normally they would sell their products through uh, retailers and groceries. Uh, and, and now they're what, what they did is they built two new websites, uh, snacks.com, pantryshop.com, and now they, they're selling straight to the customer, so direct to the end client. Um, this is, of course, challenging, uh, not just from a digital point of view. Building that website in itself is not really hard, but it creates uh, tension in their value chain because uh, they're normally uh, building partnerships together with retailers and groceries. But of course, if you're circ yeah, if they're avoiding or circumventing the middleman, this creates new tension or maybe potentially some leverage in this uh, value chain. So it will be interesting to follow how this will uh, play out. Like I said, building the website itself is probably not hard, but managing the supply chain in the back end, managing all the internal politics, that takes some time. Uh, but still, PepsiCo managed to get this live in, uh, in less than 30 days. So it's an interesting example uh, to follow. More of those we, uh, we track more of those large companies that are making those changes and we're already preparing a new report, a new document, uh, focusing more on those uh, type of innovations by larger brands. The last part of our presentation, uh, here I'll quickly highlight a couple of triggers to find those white spaces. So if you need to jump to a potential uh, new open area, a new business model, uh, where do you start? What, where do you get your inspiration from? Uh, we recommend to look at six different triggers. So you normally can use those triggers to uh, find inspiration for your uh, next innovation. But in the low-touch economy, not all of those triggers are as important or uh, as impactful. Um, from those six, like industry shifts, new regulation, consumer shifts, societal changes, new resources, and new technology, um, the most dominant ones today are industry shifts and changes in consumer behavior. Um, due to the lockdowns and different restrictions, people are behaving differently, and some of that behavior will become habits or people get used to the new type of, of, of uh, interacting with companies. And we, we assume that some of that behavior will stay. So that's a strong driver. And at the same time, if looking at uh, um, changes in, in supply chains, new market entrance. So there's a lot of stuff happening in terms of industry shifts. Also, that's uh, very, yeah, very critical and will have a significant impact on many other organizations. If you look at the bottom corner here, new technology, the crisis itself didn't trigger uh, or didn't change the potential of a lot of new technologies. So of course, technology will be used to uh, create new innovations. But it wasn't. It's, it's currently it's not the leading force of innovation uh, for this specific uh, scenario or this specific uh, crisis. So we map out all those uh, areas and then we spot new opportunities. What's happening in, in each environment uh, in this deck and also in our research, we show you a couple of examples. So also in this video, I can highlight maybe a couple of them. So if we look at consumer behavior and then if you track consumer behavior and what's happening there. Uh, often you can build then B2B tools to, to help companies that are trying to tap into that new type of behavior. But let me give a concrete example. So if you look at the trigger here, um, there are new expectations towards social distancing eating. Uh, people need to uh, keep distance when going to restaurants or even on, on if you work together with, um, yeah, let's say on a factory floor or something. In general, how people interact with each other will be, yeah, you need to be redesigned. Uh, but sticking to the example of hospitality in restaurants, so a restaurant owner need to rethink how they do, how, how they will uh, do business. So they need to redesign their facilities. If you offer products that can help them, then of course you're in the right position because you uh, have a tool that can uh, tackle a very urgent uh, need. Uh, this tool here, uh, Plan Finder, uh, is in the right position. Uh, what they do, you can upload or you can create a floor plan of your, in this case, your restaurant. Um, you can use a couple of parameters. So uh, you maximize, basically what it does is it maximizes the number of tables that you can use to, to maximize the commercial impact you can still have with your uh, company, with your business. So in this case, the, it's used for restaurants, but uh, the same technology can also be applied to uh, factory floors, to event floors, like there are a lot of operations, even schools, where you just want to make sure that with the available space, uh, you want to see what, how can I maximize the, the yield or the potential 
that I have uh, with the assets that I'm I still am allowed that I still am allowed to use. So this is a notable example. Another category, uh, virtual immigration. This fits within uh, uh, industry changes, how companies are working today. So this focuses on the uh, working from home uh, trend that is ongoing and that many agree that some of those things will stay definitely in, the, uh, in, the, in a couple of years. Uh, people are now finally uh, working, uh, uh, working from home. So there are many people uh, need new tools. There's new, new interaction models. So there are all sorts, this just basically creates a whole new uh, space for uh, innovations where there are new uh, needs popping up, new niche markets are, are, can be created. So if, if you're in an adjacent space already, you can probably, uh, there's potential to move in that area as well, because this is probably something that will stay for a longer time. Um, virtual immigration, meaning uh, there are um, potentially members from outside of an organization that can suddenly join a virtual team because uh, normally the team works together um, in, a, in a closing environment, the same office. But if everybody works uh, remotely, this creates an opportunity that also people from abroad or far away could potentially join those teams because many of the hurdles of you have to be there in the office, uh, those hurdles are being taken away. And it creates a, a new interaction model uh, to work with people abroad as, as locally uh, as well. But of course, it creates new challenges. So uh, the example here, how do you um, do proper team building, bonding? How do you make uh, decisions together if everybody's at multiple locations? Um, so this creates a market for many tools that can, ha can help out. The example here is, uh, yeah, I want to highlight here is uh, Pizza Time. So this is a, was a side project or a specific startup launched uh, last year. Basically what it does, it links up um, people that are uh, working remotely, but they can all of, just with one click on a button, everybody gets a pizza delivered. You all call in at the same moment. You have this joint pizza moment uh, all together with your colleagues. Uh, last year, there was almost no demand. So the people behind pizza time decided to yeah, shut down that, that part of the business. They didn't want to do that anymore. Uh, but recently, since March, there was so much demand. Suddenly they got new requests coming in. So where is your service? So they relaunched now this, this concept. And what's interesting here is that they, instead of uh, working together for companies that um, already were used to work remote for years, that was their original target market. Now they see all sorts of companies that are uh, that are that need to work together now for the first time remotely. So they need to redesign their processes. They need to rethink their team building strategies and so on. And this is one of the tools then that uh, offers a solution for that. The other example here, threads.com, it's a specific solution where teams can work together to have more structured way of decision making. If you're not all in the same room, how do you do that asynchronous uh, discussions to, uh, to align on a, on a specific uh, decision? So threads.com is in, in that space. And again, that's just a need that's there that become, will become bigger. The more people are working remotely, the more you will need tools like this. So there are more, there are multiple of those examples that, that we could explore, but how do you use that in your organization? Well, the best way forward is that you um, look at all the different shifts and trends that are happening. You will put them on one side. So in this case, eh, you will um, write down all different trends and shifts that you uh, that you notice in your, in, your, uh, in your industry. And then you match that maybe with different business units or with different aspects of your organization. So in this case, on the left side, um, there are multiple shifts, things that are uh, evolving in, in currently that might stay for the next uh, year or two. And then you link that up with different industries or verticals, and then you see if there's potential there uh, to create a new solution. The example here, one of the shifts that, that we track is the rise of uh, human-free service models, uh, meaning um, yeah, you want to avoid uh, people or human interaction in, in production uh, processes, in uh, client interactions because yeah, close physical interaction is, is a potential risk or even liability for companies. So that's um, companies need to rethink how you do that. But if you match that down with an industry like construction uh, business, um, you see there's an opportunity for um, the, the full redesign of how the process of, of building buildings. Um, today, there's a big issue because all those contractors and, and uh, electricians and all those people working together on small spaces, that's, uh, that's a risk. So probably what you want to do is to redesign or rethink how you actually build uh, a business or build a, a, a building. 
So you need to uh, rethink uh, new service models there, new construction methods to maybe to work with more prefab structures. That's just one example here where you would align one specific industry with one specific uh, trend. But you can do that as a separate exercise, looking at multiple industries and multiple trends to see if you can create your own new solutions. So how do you move forward? And like I showed, this is just one example, one specific tool or way of thinking, but uh, you want to do that in, uh, in a on a continuous way. So uh, what we strongly recommend is that you would um, do those explorations, do, do those exploration exercises, but on a continuous basis. So you want to, first of all, you want to monitor the new normal, to keep continuously keep track of what's changing in, in the market in terms of consumer behavior, new regulation that's coming up. Uh, so, okay, continuously you keep track of what's, what's happening. That, that you will use, let's say, every couple of weeks to spot potential new white spaces or new opportunities. So you will create new concepts or new areas to investigate. And then uh, out of those exercises, uh, on a regular basis, again, you try to launch new experiments to see uh, if you can actually uh, create a new product or service for a new market if you or you want to integrate something. But those things you probably want to do in small sprints that you can learn in a matter of weeks, whether or not there's potential to invest even more in that area. And if, it is, if there's no potential, you can quickly kill it as well. So basically, we have three different tracks. This is typically a collaboration model we set up with our clients or we can co-design in, in doing that, but it's a rhythm that's that's quite effective. And many, yeah, if you can set up your own structure to do that, uh, we can definitely recommend in following such a, a three-track uh, process. So some key takeaways: um, we strong we believe that uh, the uh, the low-touch economy will be here to stay at least for the next year or two, and even later on, there a lot of products and services will be accelerating the markets. There will be some changes. Things will not go back as uh, not everything will go back uh, to pre-pandemic uh, levels. So low tech economy will be here to stay. Um, you can learn from winners and from losers. And there, uh, we can look at the most successful companies, try to understand why they work, what are the techniques that are effective, and then copy those elements to your company. Uh, and probably, yeah, I think we are in the space of innovation, and it actually it's one of the most, yeah. Uh, it's a very exciting time because many areas are being disrupted today. Many people are challenging the status quo. So it's actually one of the best uh, eras today to look at innovation and to rethink how you do business. So there are multiple opportunities out there. There are new needs, new markets that are being created. So we see that there is potential for a new land grab. If you see the, um, if, if, if you just wait it out so, and then you probably, if you, if you just wait out today, you probably will miss out on a lot of, of those opportunities. So we strongly recommend to explore new areas and maybe to at least set up a couple of experiments to maybe jump on some of those opportunities that are now presenting themselves in the market. So that was just a quick update. Um, as like I said, on the lowtoucheconomy.com, we will share regularly those uh, slide decks, new updates, and feel free to join one of our later webinars as well, where we give more up-to-date um, research insights. Thanks. <laughs>